Belize, the next country on our journey along the Pan American Highway. Come with us as we explore this amazing land. So I just dropped Lindsay off at the airport and if you haven't been following our channel, um, she is going back for um, medical and health reasons and she's gonna meet me up again in Guatemala and I'm heading to Belize on my own shortly in a couple days here. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little you know, melancholic about Lindsay not being there and us exploring this beautiful country together. Anyway, um, I'm excited and let's get to it. Let's go to Belize. Fresh off a three week house and dog sit and Lindsay on her way back to Belgium. I am heading south towards the Belize border. Seeing all the familiar signs of the places we've already been sparks recent memory and how different this is going to be now that I'm going to be on my own for a month or more. Okay, so step one, I just had my exit stamp from the office here on my passport to leave. Uh, they took my FMM and the receipt. Now I'm heading to go turn my tip and once that is done, I can enter Belize. Okay, I don't really like filming around government officials, but super easy for that too. I just had to give them my tip. They came out to check the truck to make sure the numbers matched. They had me sign the tip paperwork. I got a receipt and they told me that my deposit will be back on my card tomorrow. So that's the only step I have to do to leave Mexico. Let's enter Belize. First step when crossing into the Belize border is you need to get fumigation. I originally thought this was going to be for the inside, but luckily I was wrong. And now I learned the hard way that you need to bring cash when you are crossing into the border. I was wrong in assuming you could use your card for everything. You can't use it for anything, so bring cash. Looks like next step is immigration. Uh, for some reason they've blocked off the drive up way and I'm gonna do a walk up. Okay, got my paperwork, I hope I have enough. Okay, I'm back from probably the hardest part of the immigration process, the main office. I was able to get my tourist card in and the permit for the vehicle. One more thing, I think, get inspected and then get insurance. And then we're out of here. Well, we're in here. <laughs> Now we're at the last step. We got through everything, immigration, the vehicle check. Last thing we need to do is get insurance. So we're completely legal on the roads here in Belize. So once that's done, we're home free. Managed to get insurance. Now all I need to do is stick this on the, on the windshield. Hopefully it doesn't block the view too much. And then we're out of here. We're in it. <laughs> Let's go explore Belize. From the border crossing, I head to one of the most northern communities in Belize. Why? Because I have the time. So I'm driving down this path. Um, it's like an off-road track almost. Apparently the road's closed, but there is something interesting. There is a ferry diversion. It's like a single vehicle ferry. This is interesting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I knew at some point on the Pan American, I'd get to be on a boat like this, but not so soon. <laughs> yeah, that's something I didn't expect to see. <laughs> and would you believe that there's no engine? These guys are using a hand pulley to get this thing across. But this is everyday life for these people here, and this is just a minor inconvenience in a small ripple in the pond for me, so I count my lucky stars. Everyone waving and yelling hello at me as I drive by. Maybe for the camper, maybe for the camera. But only a few minutes and I was back on my way to my first destination. I'm in northern Belize in Shipston Nature Preserve, and so far it seems like all they're preserving is bugs. There are quite a few of them, <laughs> but 
This seems to be a pretty cool spot. First planned stop on the trip in Belize here. Literally running through the forest to avoid the bugs, I make it to this lookout tower. Looks like we're in the highest point <laughs> for a thousand kilometers in every direction. <laughs> there is nothing but trees here in Belize. Could you please? Okay, sorry, I'll stop. I'll come to realize that Belize has a lot of butterflies, and this will be only the first of many sanctuaries that I will have seen on my travels. Unfortunately, none of the butterflies want to sit still long enough for me to get a photo. At least their pupae can't fly away. Or this one that was too content eating a banana to try and leave. But finally, I was at my campsite for the day to reflect on exactly what just went on. Well, so that was the end of the first day in Belize. And Belize so far seems a lot like Mexico, just with like English people speaking and English lettering and everything like that. So that's kind of cool. Don't need to try and fumble my way through my terrible Spanish. Um, there's also a weird one. As you know, Lindsay's not here and it's weird being in a new place without her as we've been traveling for seven months together side by side so <laughs> it's just like mexico here <laughs> oh that's great this is camp for the night um yeah let's uh let's get to it luckily i can actually set up the camper on my own one thing we do once we're in our new country is of course add our new stickers. We got these stickers from overlandstickers.com and we've only been in three countries so far, obviously. Just traveling in three countries. Now we're finally gonna add the fourth. I bought these stickers on a whim without even an idea of where to put them or what to do with them. It was Lindsay's idea to put them on the rear door. And now everyone driving behind us can see where we've been and who we are in Texas to go faster. It actually changes up a lot, uh, one country, when you only see three for so long. <laughs> Belize. You better believe it. I hope I don't say that too many times, but I'm gonna. Oh, did I mention it's hot out? If you're a longtime follower of our channel, you're probably sick of me saying that. Well, you know what? So am I. But you know what else? Thank God for the ocean. From the wonderful little town of Sartaneja that I have no business being in, I head for what I hope to be something interesting. I'm heading for an ancient Mayan city, one that is known as Lamanai. So I'm here at the Mayan city of Lamanai, I think. Um, it's apparently one of the most beautifully preserved Mayan cities in all of Central America, and also one of the longest inhabited. So uh, we're gonna compare this to Yas Chilin, which is our current favorite, and see what we think. I'm already getting flashbacks to Mexico with all of the howler monkeys. I wonder if we can get, you know, maybe some closer shots. Wasn't able to get much in Mexico. Lamanai has a crazy history that spans over three different millennia, dating from its inception in the 16th century BCE and until it finally fell to the British in the 17th century CE. There's a lot of howler monkeys in these trees and they're pretty close. I think we can get some good footage. There's also a lot of tourists here, and they arrived by boat. I was the only person to arrive by uh, vehicle. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't know you could arrive by boat. Monkeys are now the primary residents, as is the case with so many ancient Mayan cities. And they're doing exactly what we all should be doing in this heat. Chilling and snacking. Certainly one of the best Mayan cities I've been to on my travels so far. This temple is insane looking. It's huge. This 33 meter or 108 foot temple 
was strictly off limits to anyone. Even with a guide, you had to stay away. It appears in rough shape, and at closer inspection, you can see that it is in mid-repair. There was also what looks like a new archaeological dig forming, but I didn't want to disturb anyone, so I moved on. Now we're at what is called the Mask Temple, and what I think is probably the coolest part of this entire place, that something is here that I haven't seen in any other Mayan ruin. Let's go check it out, and I'll show you why. It's because of these giant stone heads in the side of the temple that make this super cool. Now, I didn't do my research on anything about this place, but I'm assuming it's some sort of Mayan, either god or, you know, king or something like that, but it doesn't matter. That is so cool. The lease has been pretty interesting so far, uh, aside from this amazing Mayan city that I'm in right now. Um, yeah, it's a lot like Mexico in a couple ways. Some other ways that are a little confusing is the road signs are both in kilometers and miles per hour, and sometimes you don't know which one they're talking about. Some other things, the roads are about 50% concrete, 50% dirt roads. So. Two days in, I've done a lot of gravel roads. <laughs> it's a little ridiculous, but that is what it is. Um, there's going to be a lot more to uncover and explore in this wonderful country. Can't wait to see it. Belize is also, it's pretty flat. <laughs> there's only a few hills, um, but it's very green. And like I said, Lots of off-roading, <laughs> it's a little bumpy. We're hitting the road right now because it is friggin' hot out. It's got to be near 40 degrees Celsius. I was going to stay in the area, but I decided to sit in the AC instead. So, <laughs> let's take a little cruise. After leaving Lamini and taking the rocky back roads to get to the highway, I came across something that I didn't expect. This area, known as Shipyard, is a large Mennonite community. It kind of took me a second to realize what I was looking at, but I'm reminded of Canada, as we have communities like this there as well. Eventually, I find the highway and I make it to the next stop, which is called Crooked Tree Nature Preserve. It's a bird sanctuary, and I do love to try and get pictures of animals, so that's the main reason why I'm here. Made it to this really nice spot in Crooked Tree Nature Preserve here in Belize. Only 20 uh, pesos, or not pesos, cool, from used to pesos, 20 uh, Belize dollars to stay here. And it's right on the water, hopefully for a nice breeze, because it is friggin' warm. Um, but for now, I'm gonna set up. But of course, camp setup is always first. Really loving this spot. I've uh, been here for a couple hours already. Um, it has been super warm so far, but I mean, that's Central America in the summer and year round, I guess. But <laughs> this place has an amazing breeze to really cool you down from the 40 degrees. Um, that's why I decided to keep moving today. Instead of staying back at the ruins, I decided to make the drive in the heat with the AC. There's something great here. They even have showers. Pretty stoked to be able to use that after sweating my butt off for two days here. Uh, really the perfect spot. No one else around, and apparently I missed a couple people. Uh, also travelers, overlanders, who were here last night and left this morning. And they're headed to Key Cocker, which is where I'm going next. So maybe I'll catch up with them. I'm loving how easy it is to find camp spots here in Belize. 
I spent one night here in Crooked Tree National Preserve. Uh, great spot with the constant breeze. It's kind of ruining the audio right now, but it's worth it <laughs> to have a nice cool breeze all night in this deadly heat. Uh, I came here because it's supposed to be a really good viewing spot for uh, wildlife and birds, but it's the dry season, so the water is super low right now. Um, this is actually really super low. Uh, usually it's a lot higher. And the bird species are kind of limited right now too, so that's kind of an issue. There's basically just vultures and looks like cormorants and stuff. Um, but I'm gonna go take a look, see what's around. And then I'm heading to Belize City because from there I'm taking a boat into the Keys. So there's a lot going on. Still wish Lindsay was here. Miss her so much, but we gotta keep traveling and she'll be joining me soon. Now, if Lindsay were here, we would probably stay another night. I tend to travel a little faster than her. And when we are together, for both of us, we need to compromise. So that might be the best thing about traveling solo. You only have to make deals with yourself. <laughs> People are so friendly here. It's definitely a little different than Mexico in that way as the people in Mexico were friendly, however they were a little more uh, subdued and, and didn't really want to engage and, and, and here they really they really engage with you first in a lot of the cases. Always smiling and laughing and waving and oh yeah, Belize is, Belize is great. <laughs> it's only been a couple days, but I feel like I've seen a lot. Belize is far from being a large country and I plan on seeing as much as I can in the 30 days that I'm given. Next time on Just Traveling, I'm headed to the large capital city that is Belize City. I've got some plans to take a boat tour over to Key Cocker. But I'm not heading for the nightlife. I'm heading there to swim with sharks, a lifelong goal about to be achieved. And of course, the gentle stingrays. There's all sorts of marine life on these Caribbean islands. So please, join me next time as I bring you along for the ride on our next episode of Just Traveling.